There are many of our people who are thinking more deeply and more broadly, are looking at it as it actually is, and are beginning to see it more in the international context and the relation that it has with the African uh, struggle, a uh, human rights struggle, or the struggle for human rights. And as such, we can then take it into the United Nations. We bring about the freedom of these people by any means necessary. Hi everyone, welcome to Recharge Colonialism. A little bit about us. We are an organization of Pan-Africanists who are really seeking to raise awareness of the fact that Africans in the United States are being colonized. So if you're interested in learning more about this organization, you can learn more at WCC, I'm sorry, RechargeColonialism.org. Also, if you're interested in becoming either a part of our movement or becoming an, an actual member, you can also do that at WCC. See his website, WeChargeColonialism.org. You can hit the join button. And that way you can have the, the option whether or not you just want to become a part of our movement and get updates on what we're doing, or if you actually want to actively participate and be a member of one of our committees. So if you decide you want to be a part of a committee, you will have a more of a, a process for that. But instead, if you want to just be a part of our community, you can essentially fill out an application and someone will get back to you. Also, if you would like to donate to WCC, you can do that on our website as well and you can also go to our teespring if you would like to support us uh, we have a number of t-shirts and hoodies that we are making available to people so you can support us that way so now with that i would like to move into the subject of today i want to talk about the issue of decolonizing the mind during an election year and I want to talk about this issue because constantly African people were getting different messages thrown at us as to what our answer should be. We should be looking to this person. We should be looking to this institution. We should be looking to that institution. And these things obviously are compelling to us because historically we've been told over and over again that if we want freedom, we have to go through a white institution. If we want freedom, we have to go through a white man. If we want freedom, we have to go through this process. Now, we're not told to question the process. We're not told to question the man, and we're not told to question the institution. Because if we did question the process, we would say, well, okay, why would I have to go through this process if I was brought here as a slave and I was not given an option? Why should I have to go through the white man's process? Why shouldn't I be able to have a process that's more reflective of me? Why should not I not have a process that's built to actually rectify what was done to my people? But we're not supposed to question these things, which is why we are literally colonized still. We are literally seen as slaves, and we're not supposed to have an idea of self-determination. Self-determination, which is a principle that WCC takes very serious, self-determination is the idea that as for me and my community, we do not need someone else to, de to determine for us what is best for us. We do not need someone else to tell us which route to go. We do not need someone else to tell us what is or is not feasible. Instead, we're going to come together as a community, show unity, and we're going to figure out what is best for our people on our own terms. Now, if you think about what I just said, that goes completely contrary to what's going on, especially in this election year. Uh, obviously, we're going to be told over and over again, you have to vote for this party, you have to vote for that party, you have to vote for this party. And you know, personally, if you want to vote for a party, like some people really don't want to vote for either party, but they're saying, you know what, I'd rather not see Donald Trump have another another term. I respect everyone's right to feel that way. I don't think anyone should be condemned for voting, honestly, because every single person, you have to make your own political decisions. But at the same time, if you're someone who does not want to participate in the system, if you're someone that sees casting a ballot a, a ballot for the system as essentially a way of allowing the system to have dominance over you, then absolutely, you have every right not to vote. Obviously, I've said many times, whether on this channel or on my channel, I don't have any reason to vote inside of this election. Donald Trump is not the boogeyman to me. White supremacy is the boogeyman to me. Now, if white supremacy is the boogeyman, man and not Donald Trump, then I have to look at Donald Trump and Joe Biden essentially the same. Sure, one is more louder. One might be more outspoken about what they say about me. Although I will say, as far as what I've heard from Donald Trump, you know, he said a lot of racist things, but I've never heard him say anything that would be considered more racist than what I've heard Joe Biden say. So it's really a uh, interesting that that's the, the way people want to go with it. But, you know, we're essentially told that we should just vote for this person and do it because you know uh, it's it's for the best and and overall you know you're going to get something in the end 
but no one tells us what we're going to get in the end. No one tells us what we're going to reap from this election. Like it, the the literal thing we're told is get Trump out of office. And the question becomes, well, what happens after that? No one has an answer. No one has a plan. No one has a plan. How do you get us from, for, how do you get us out of the conditions that we've been in? Whether we were in the Obama presidency, the Bush presidency, the Clinton presidency, our communities are the same. So the question to the Democrats for me is, what are you going to do differently, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? What are you going to do differently than what Obama did? Because Obama did didn't work. What are you going to do differently than what Clinton did? Because what he did didn't work. And what you'll hear them do is they'll do a little dance around the issues and say, well, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do this and do that. But you have to be very specific as a people who is saying, you know what, I am in a colonized state, I do not accept this state, and I'm looking to see what you're actually going to do to change course. And more likely than not, almost every single politician is going to find some type of way to, to stay away from those issues, to find some type of way to sweet talk you, make you think that they're on your side. And the problem with our people is that we like that massage. It's like a massage to our ego. Okay, Joe Biden, you care about us. You're at our church service. You're at our rally. You you said George Floyd's name. Therefore, okay, I feel like you're actually someone that's better for me. But the policies are the same. And that should be the issue. The policies are the same. What policy does Joe Biden have that Trump that, that goes contrary to Trump's policy against African people, what's the policy? Not just domestically. And this is the other thing I want to say to my people. If you're only thinking about domestic politics and you're not even thinking about international politics, and the domestic politics suck, let's be very clear. We're still in a colonized state. The prison industrial complex is very much intact. The education system is in dire, dire conditions. Every single aspect of our life in America is in very, very, very horrible condition. But even if it wasn't, what is he going to do internationally that was not done to African people by every single presidency before him? And this is what we mean. Decolonizing your mind during an election year, allowing yourself to ask questions, allowing yourself to not have someone else tell you what you have to do to get to where you want to go. Being a decolonized, having a decolonized mind means that you don't look at your oppressor as your means to salvation. I want to emphasize that again, your oppressor, the one who puts you in this condition, the one who wrote the crime bill, you don't look at that person as a means to redemption out of the situation that they put you in. Being, having a decolonized mind means you're going to question the system at every level. And ultimately, you're going to find, whenever you find that that system will never represent you, will never do right by you, will never be poised to change the conditions that it created, that you have to say that another system has to be built and any system other than that system will not receive my support, will not receive my vote, will not receive my presence inside of the election. So that is what I want to discuss because I see a lot of obviously the same old, same old. We're supposed to vote and we're supposed to suck it up and then after the election, they said they're going to get to us. But what, has, what did Malcolm X say many, many, many years ago that is still present today? He said, well, listen, you put them in office and that's, guess what? They got to these people. They got to the, the feminists. They got to the LGBT. They got to the, to the, to the, uh, to the, to the, to the Latinos. They got to the, the Wall Street. They got to all these people. And after they get to you, now they want to come to you. Now they want to come to you. You put them first and they put you last. That is literally a, a colonized person. You're putting your oppressor first and they're going to put you last. So I just say this to add some more dialogue to the situation and understanding that we as a people have every right to assert our self-determination. We have every right to assert that this state, this, this system that does not represent us cannot go forward with our consent. And we have every right to find alternative means to organize. Now, of course, that means we have to organize. And so I encourage you all to join an organization. I always do that. I, it does not have to be WCC. I would just love to see a moment where most Black people, you go to them on the street and you say, what organization are you a part of? I'm a part of the NAACP. What organization are you a part of? I'm a part of the Urban League. What organization are you a part of? I'm a part, part of the All African People's Revolutionary Party. I would love to see a day where you could see 
every single African person organized because in, when that day happens, that's when you're going to see a real, real, real cause of concern for the system that has only allowed been allowed to flourish and your demise because of the fact that you are not organized and you're not aware of your collective power as, aside from your individual power. So that's all I have. Again, please visit WeChargeColonialism at um, <laughs> org, and you can also email us at WeChargeColonialism at gmail.com. I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you guys in the next video. the justice bank so what is the justice bank i've talked before about the fact that we were trying to do a bell project but we ended up deciding to do a mutual aid fund the justice bank initiative will essentially take members and if you would pay a very uh, low um, monthly membership fee. We're going to keep it low on purpose because we are servicing a people who are the most disenfranchised in this country, the most under attack, and it's not reasonable to expect that there's uh, that someone could pay thirty dollars a month, fifty dollars a month, whenever you are of that group. Now, when you become a member, we're going to have a trial period. Maybe say after uh, three or six months, whatever, um, you are eligible to petition us for. Um, help with your expenses. Now, what type of people who um, are targeted from the prison industrial complex, what type of people would be eligible? Well, because we're doing a mutual aid society, that would be democratic. What we mean is that if you are a member of the Justice Bank, you would have a say in what types of, let's say, charges or offenses that you want to be covered under the Justice Bank. The initial idea so. is that all of us are putting our money in collectively because we are a target of the prison industrial complex. We Every single day that we walk out, you as a black person, you are seen as a criminal in this country, and that is a fact. Um, and we want to offer a type of protection for our people um, and almost like an insurance policy, honestly, um, that if you do have some type of running with the law, if you do have a charge, a criminal charge that you can account on um, a mutual aid society to help you and assist you with those types of charges. Nowhere in the world incarcerates as much as we do. We've seen extremely high rates of exposure to the criminal justice system for African-American men with very low levels of schooling. So if we think about black men who were born in the late 1970s and who were growing up through the American prison boom of the 1980s and the 1990s, the chances that they're going to serve time in state or federal prison if they dropped out of high school is about 70%. So going to prison for that group of black men with very low levels of schooling, that's become a normal life event. And that's really only happened in the last 10 years. We're at this point now where there's about 1.2 million African-American children with a parent who's incarcerated. That's about one in nine. 